supports in the game, it kills. They can do a lot with skill pretty well with it, but if you have a slow start with them, they are practically useless. They have almost no counter push to speak of, Prepare and they battle. offer you very little in team fights. So yep. it's really going to be hit or miss. And well, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, welcome in if you're just joining us from the multicast. I'm LD. I'm joined here by Lumi, and it's time for LGD versus Newbie. LGD control their own fate here. A win over Newbie means they will move on to the next phase, to phase three, and then it will just be down to Newbie versus Mouse to decide the second team. Should they lose, we have potential for another three-way tie. And in that case, well, we just play the whole matchup again. The three crucial item all three matches. pick up right now is how he has boots first. They're looking for a first blood pickoff. When you have the long range of the Earthshaker Fissure, Fissure into a Rocket Barrage. It could come right now They're here. Gonna go. He's going to let loose the stun. Where's the Fissure? It's going to actually nice block here if they want to go on the right side. How's going to isolate two hero. Lin stuck it behind the Fissure. They grab first blood immediately. Shao Chuchi is going to be a little bit of trouble as well. Another Rocket Barrage fly off. And that boots of speed's already paying off by itself. How's that going to run back Shao? It's Tanking on the front line here, another rocket barrage, as they well as another done. nice fissure. What the fuck? Another rocket barrage gonna come through. How's gonna eat an arrow? Looks like how's gonna drop off as a result, but I think they have done enough. Shall it? Is he gonna die to Gale from long range? But he's in the trees. Banana's gonna hit. It's Whoa, a low right kill. He yeah. goes up. It does nothing, and it looks like LGD give up three. It may be more. Do they have any more nukes? No, no more mana for the fissure. Nothing from the shaman. But what a disastrous start for LGD. I know. Those fissures. The fissures won them the fight. Sungsheng, he blocked two in together. They had nowhere to run. The Chiro just chewed them apart with Barrage. And then on top of that, the Alk stun connects on two. MVP of that fight, Sungsheng. No question about that. So, given the fact how the level 1 engagement went, uh, does it affect any of the laning drastically? Like, <laughs> yeah. Any, well, I mean, like, who, who's got the 2-kill? Okay, it's gonna be how that got the 2-kill, but he did die as a result, though. I think he didn't lose much gold because most of that gold was reliable gold. He's actually already had something coming on the courier here, I believe, and, well, it's gonna be a bracer recipe, so... I think it's a huge deal. Gyrocopter, a pretty mobile here in general. He's, a, I believe, 315 base move speed. So having that against Razor, only a Bassy means you can easily run out of the static link. And you're also more difficult to bring down. They Wraith King stun you, they they arrow you to follow up. And I don't know if they have the follow up damage, let me. They're going aggressive trying and they gave up three kills and yeah. a first blood. They are. They cannot be happy with this start. I'm surprised they didn't just sacrifice a Venom and say, you know what, we're going to just defensive trial lane. Because that 3-kill, like you said, is going to be quite a big factor. With that Bracer, you're not killing Hao anymore. Maybe you could pick off a support or two, but Shanshui and Banana is going to play so defensive attack. now. Because they don't need to take a risk. Meanwhile, back on the top lane, it's a matchup we've seen before. It's a Venom versus Doom matchup. Doom should lose the lane in terms of the CS war, but honestly, he's actually going to get quite a bit out of this, at least in, in terms of the experience. Yeah, the other thing about those kills is that Shadow Shaman is going to have fast boots. He's up to 500 gold, and he is by far the most vulnerable target in this lane. The squishiest and also the least mobile. So, at, he's the ideal one to get catch with the Wraith King. Like, even if they go in right now with the Wraith King stun, I don't know if they're going to be able to run him down once he gets the boots. And here comes the Fissure. They want to jump. They get the shackles on Rabbit as well, and this is going to be a train wreck of the bottom lane. Four deaths already after the first three kills. They add one more on. The problem with this LGD draft is that there's no plan B because your your two supports needs a ton of experience. Razor is not a hero that you can leave on the bot lane by himself and it's gonna do fine. It's not like a Windrunner or Marana or anything like that. So I don't know what the plan B is for LGD. Are they gonna stick it out here and keep losing the lane? Oh, or he, he let, let's see. Did he get this century? I think he's just short. Yeah, he whiffed on his first century, unfortunately. Yeah, I I don't think he's gonna be sad about it because they're winning the bigger part of the engagements. They're getting a lot more kills, they're being a lot more successful, and Hao is just non-stop farming. Hao's almost at his phase boots. Once he gets his phase boots, he could stay here by himself and win the lane. Yeah, you just flak, and you drive their supports off the lane. And yeah. if they're not able to combo you down, which frankly, they need a really long range arrow to kill him at this point, they can't do anything. So, we should look at the other lanes here. We talked about top a little bit, going pretty well for the Veno, as you Mid? mentioned, but not a huge win. Oh, sorry, I, I thought he was brewing a concoction, but he was uh, just... Using and in the region. mid lane, Moo is, Mu is not farming very well, but for Alk's mid, and they generally lose their lane, right? I, best you break even if it's against something like a Dragonite, but you make it up later. You can stack the Ancients, you've got the Grievous Greed so you can farm quickly, and you offer a lot to your team in the fights. So that stun and the Minus Armor, in combination with Gyrocopter's physical damage, you can burst almost any of these heroes in LGD. They're all quite squishy, to be honest. Yeah, I, I guess in theory, Marana could leap it, but... 
Apart from that, LGD is uh, in quite a bit of trouble. I, I think they need to move their supports around, to be honest. Like, just sitting in this bottom lane is not going to work for them. The difficult part is you have Razor here, right? Yeah, so you leave him alone. He needs babysitting. He's probably going to die. But so. you can't win this lane. It's can't. just not possible. So that's what I'm saying. There's no plan B for LGD. I, I have no clue. They could put the Veno down here, perhaps, and, and just spam more and stay back. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't do that after that level 1 fight, because they really should have. I still, I, so yeah, like I look at their draft and there's no real hard carry, but I still think LGD's draft is incredibly scary late game. They have a ton of damage, a lineup that matches up quite well against Doom, but uh, not making those rotations now. It looks like they'll finally begin. The Wraithkin's gonna head towards top, and maybe they can kill the Doom. Yeah, yeah. Doom, do you have use that Scourge Earth, so He's maybe they're gonna wait it out and then come in for Galen and Stun? Should be able to enough to do, get the kill. Here's a Courier flying in with the bottle, so that actually might change the gank. And in fact, with the bottle being delivered, uh, the opportunity is gone. And meanwhile, mid lane, I really like what LGD's done. They have rotated both supports off the lane. It sucks. Razor's going to be fairly useless this game, most likely, but they have n pretty much zero chance of winning that bottom lane. This way, at least they have a chance of turning the lanes. But you look at the vision for Newbie, and and they know it's empty right now. They've got an Observer Ward spotted out the bottom lane, as well as an Observer Ward near the river, and not seeing anybody, they, they know what's up. Now, with that said, though, the newbie support is still kind of stuck there. They can't really pull or tunnel through because the sentry has missed. I guess they could go smoke and, and try to get a gank mid, but that's going to be fairly obvious as well. So even though the early game hasn't gone well for LGD, the rotation for now it's working out. They're hunting Xiao Wei. They saw he's missing. They see he's eating a creep and, and they start painting, but unfortunately, they're too late. He dodges the gank. He still gets experience and... Now he goes back to lane. It's, it's really the beauty of this offlane Doom is, or, well, Doom in general is, if he's having trouble, there's always a plan B. Whereas you look at some of LGD's heroes, in fact, all of them, mm -hmm. they're there not plan no B plan type B. heroes, like you said. Yeah. They'll go on mid now. Moose got his ultimate. It is about to end. If they can hit this arrow, this could turn the game a bit. Earth Give them Shaker. an opening. Earthshaker has a teleport scroll, just, just mentioning it. It looks like they're going to smoke mid as well. Oh, uh, if they wait too long. It feels like they may go at just the wrong moment. It's just I've just got a bad sense about this. Attack. Well, I, I think they waited for a bit and then realized Alchemist's ultimate is about to cool down, and that definitely was not going to work. There's Shao Wei coming around. Shao Wei's going to go on Yao, but there's backup coming. Well, the Veno may be in trouble. A few right clicks will secure the kill, but there's a lot of heroes inbound. Shao Wei wants to run, but the backstab isn't actually here. They're waiting behind the tower. Oh, they will and he's be here. Full HP. Yeah, no, I think that thing will be enough. The sun's gonna come through. Razor has stolen a lot of damage. Arrow will hit and Xiao Wei will be giving away. And meanwhile, mid lane. Mid lane it goes well. The Alk stun comes forth, and they've got a Shackles available from Banana. They'll pull him in. Fissure's at the ready. And yeah, there's your lockdown. They get the kill. The difference, I suppose, is LGD are looking at a tower. I'm not so sure Nubi are. No, Nubi definitely is not. Uh, one thing they have, oh, actually teleportation and coming in from the gyrocopter. He's, oh, the arrow's not gonna hit. How does not have call down here either. A ton of wars. This is gonna actually discourage the chase as a result. But tower is defended. And more heroes rotating towards the top lane. They're not actually gonna go, but that's really good for LGD, to be honest. They... They lose the Death Prophet, but they do a lot of damage to the tower and they trade. They force out the Doom, the Doom doesn't accomplish anything, which means they have a little more flexibility and their lineup needs Tower Gold. I feel they're very reliant on it as you go towards the mid game. Heroes that want to build just some cheap cost efficient items, getting things like mech, even a bracer here or there can make the difference and well, with the tower soft enough, the next time they go on it, they should be able to kill it. Arrow oh, mid lane. Wow. Yeah, it's gonna hit on Moo, he's got the regen though, so he doesn't really care. Not only are they reliant on Tower Gold, but they're also reliant on, on a ton of early game experience. Something you touched on earlier, uh, Mirana and Rave King, well, if they don't hit their level 6s, they are practically useless. So, I, I like to see DDC and DD actually do a little bit of pulling, do a little catch up. Another arrow flies through, this time it does oh, not hitting either. He's actually got a ward on the hill, so yep. that's going to be quite a bit more difficult. You can see Nubia's has vision all the way back to here. I like to I like newbie to actually give a little bit of experience to uh, to banana. You can see that he is rotating to the bottom lane. Him getting level six, especially taking advantage of the lackluster star of LGD, you can start to knocking down a couple towers, especially before Razor as well as uh, Death Prophet really gets online with their maxed out nuke. Yeah. And and my concern is if this goes into the mid game and they hold on to their towers. I think newbie come out way on top in terms of farm. They have Devour to begin with, so you get extra gold that way. They stack the Ancients and they have the Alk as well as the Gyro to clear them. And I, I honestly think, I think both teams use gold fairly equally well. I would say newbie supports use it a bit better. 
Uh, Wraithkin in theory can, but he's just such a slow farmer. And yeah. Here comes the haste. They get the tower. No, tower actually goes to the dire. So they at least have this going for them. But now a fissure comes in. DD's blocked in. They'll have to sack the Wraithkin. He can well, go for a TP out. Well, the flak. The flak. Oh, <laughs> done enough. He <laughs> makes it out. Much TP. The Earthshaker block was excellent, but it also blocked basically everybody else outside from Mu out. And he just made a Hail Mary TP. Here comes and the made Death Prophet. Begin the siege. And, and they look for the comeback now with the split push. They throw out a stun. And this is the stage where I think Doom is still good against Death Prophet. She's squishy enough that you can kill her if she's not careful. Yeah. How do you actually jump in there and initiate is the other question. It well, looks you've like got the Alk stun and Fissure, so... I actually... I think Nubia is pretty damn good initiation, to be honest. I suppose, yeah. Very long range, at any rate. And I, I think the key key thing has been just picked up. Banana on the bottom lane, level 6, Arcane Boots as well. He can start applying a ton of pressure by himself. Compare that to the, the other supports in this game. You've got a level 4 Wraith King and Murano. Both heroes who need, who do less and need more, I yep. would say. Just one small thing to point out, if you put the camera on Lin for a bit, this is not the skill build you want on Death Prophet. That last level of Crypt Swarm is very mana inefficient. You, you, you put 25 more mana for 50 extra damage. Oh, they're fishing for the arrow. Couldn't quite find it and do get scouted out by a Raiden Observer here. But, uh, yeah, sorry, go on with the, the Crypt Swarm. Yeah, so generally what you actually want to do is max out Witchcraft. Uh, before you take that last point of Crypt Swarm. Somewhere out there... And even a point in Silence first, I sure, would say. Yeah. It's, only, it's only 50 damage. For for 25 extra And damage. it doesn't reduce the cooldown, which is very unusual compared to most spammable nukes along those lines. Yeah, I mean, it's Witchcraft. Or quite unusual, anyway. Witchcraft, the one... That's the spell that... Yep. Ooh, arrow. I can hit on Shaui. So, somewhere out there, Wagamama is shaking his head. <laughs> they descend on mid now. They're going to make their move in, but... Oh, Nubia aren't taking towers, so I think, given the start, this is actually... Oh, okay. they're taking it now. Yeah, they're taking it Oh, uh, here come the wards. They have the Death Prophet old in 12, but Mu's gonna take this up. He stands in the front with Chemical Rage, and DD, LGD will work on the wards. If they can just kill them off quickly, this will be good, but... Oh, uh, they're gonna lose Rabbit here. Maybe they can deny him. Will there be a deny? Xiao Wei's diving deep. Oh, the denies available. He tries to TP out. They get the deny, and they get the kill. And I think they're gonna Great get the tower as LGD. well. These wards are gonna just get farmed up. Hey, if LGD is gonna get fights like that... I think they could make that comeback. Like you said, th this team used gold quite well, and they just got a ton of it. That was a bit of a mystifying dive from Xiao Wei, because he went in, and no one else on this team joined him. Yeah, just... I, I felt like they were short one stun, right? If Shen yeah. was there with a the Fissure, then they totally just run over the LGD team. They get a kill, they get a tower, and things would be pretty good. But they kind of made that dive without having enough people. Blumi, gold, dead even. Experience, slight lead for newbie. And they have... I guess the main thing that they haven't taken yet is the stack. So when they start farming their Ancients, this disparity may grow. And they are up the single tower thus far, but... Considering this team was down 4-1 to one and gave up first blood and a triple kill at the 1 minute mark, or the 0 minute mark, before the creeps even spawn, LGD is, is showing some backbone here. Yeah, and I think that primarily comes down to the, the top lane matchup. Doom's one of those heroes that, you, I mean, you could put a lot of go onto him, but at this point in the game, he doesn't really do much. Two smokes, who's gonna get off the first stun? It's the Fissure that comes through too. Now the call down to fly, DD is done though. They'll dive him with the Rocket Barrage, no chance he makes his way out. But it's only one down. Yep. I really think they should get the Wraith King level 6 before they go for any more ganks. If he has that, that's probably a different fight. Yeah, he needs a level 6 very desperately, which I'm not sure exactly where he's gonna find, because... <laughs> The whole team, that's the thing, they pick support Murana and Wraith King. They all need levels. And and gold. Well, with that said though, they are still very much so in this game. All their towers are still alive. Although not for long, here comes another Master of Award. They were able to defend their last push, because Newbie dove a little bit too deep, but I doubt Newbie's gonna make the same mistake here. Lin's hiding top lane, but the real pressure comes bottom, and there's a fissure thrown down just to slow down this aggression arrow. Not gonna connect, but now just keeps on chipping away. Tower will be in deny range here, it looks like. Do they get the last hit? That's the question. Working on the wards, tower very low. A few more volleys, not enough, and this will be nice a time. tower deny for LGD. The mid lane still standing, but if that one goes wrong, they may give up two tower denies. Yeah, small victories here and there, and that's kind of what LGD is looking for. The thing I was trying to mention earlier is that Yao's playing Venomancer, which is a hero that you could work into your game much earlier than Doom can. And, you know, obviously he was part of the tower defenses, he was part of the tower push up top. And I think that's really what's keeping them in the game, the disparity on that top lane, in terms of who could participate in the game much earlier. Now, LG Radiance does also have the Roshan advantage, so if this mid-game goes the way of LGD, 
they have the spells to easily go into the pit and start taking things down. Is this good enough? Because you're looking at an alchemist who's picked up a mech. They're probably going to offer you more if this goes late enough against the Venom. And they also have Greebles Green in addition to Devour. So, gold-wise, newbie should pull ahead. They're farming the Ancients right now, and Doom is blink. Is it good enough right now, what, what LGD have accomplished? I think looking at their draft a bit closer, the key, one of the keys for them is finding a way to take Roshan. They have Death Prophet, Razor, and Venno. These are fantastic heroes for going into the pit. Yeah. But can they find those? Not to mention Wraith King, actually, but can they find those openings? I, I think most of the next five minutes is going to be featuring Newbie taking the offense and trying to knock down more towers, and LGD trying to defend. And that really comes down to the initiation of Doom. If Doom blinks in and Doom's a Death Prophet that has not used their ultimate, for example, then the fight Fight's is won. Over. Yeah, but Fight's if over. As, as he's blinking in and the Death Prophet comes on, and then Doom gets stunned, for example, under his tower, then the fight's over for the other direction. The, the one issue, though, is they have no defensive support. So if anyone gets jumped, there's no disruption, nobody's farming to force death anytime soon, it looks like, and, and that hero's dead. And speaking of dead heroes, Lin, you're on the menu for newbie. He gets caught by the acid spray. The Doom's available. I don't know if they bought her. Shao 8 says, why the hell not? Let's secure a kill, and they'll say goodbye to Lin. Yeah, they, that's actually a lot of investment just for that tier 1 tower and the kill, but they do get it. They need to defend mid, and uh, as we see, multiple TVs are coming in. Arrow. Oh, it connects, but Moose already got his ult up. I don't think they have the burst for this. They can try. Oh, the ult's ended. The oh, he pops his mech. Yeah. What a hardest kill to kill hero as he TPs in with his ultimate turned on. Nothing you could really do about that. They will block the Ancients, and if they want to take this a bit later, LGD will need to keep on top of that. Just denying them the extra gold. The Gyrocopter uses them quite well. Uh, as well as mentioned, the Alchemist can easily farm them. Quite standard for the, the solo mid Chinese Alchemist to do that. Yeah. I, I think the damage has already been done, though, because uh, that was like a 3 4 stack that he's taken. And I like the fact that they gave it to the Alchemist instead of the Gyrocopter. Because it puts him up to level 11, which is Keating Arrow, not gonna miss it, or not gonna hit on Mu. He's just standing in their face. Yeah. I feel like Mu is basically taunting LGD at this point. Not only does he get level 11, that means he's gonna start getting points into Grievous Greed. So, as the game progresses on, that's essentially a free Hannah Midas. Uh, maybe even better, because he's taking down like, things like a Plague Ward, which you do still get Grievous Greed bounty on, uh, but yeah. knocking them down. And they are maxed. He hasn't gotten his ultimate yet, and. I guess you look at LG's draft, and the one concern here is they're running a core Venno, and newbie appear to be gearing up for mass BKB. Gyrocopter's got one on the way, Alchemist as well, and uh, I Doom at some point will pick one up. It's just a question of when for Xiao 8. And at that point, Venno offers you very little. He's held the towers for now, but I just look at LG's draft looming, and I feel they were planning on winning that top lane, on finding the first blood with the Wraith King of Mirana, and just setting up kills from there. And I'm not sure how well equipped their draft is to play for me. If they can't sneak a Roshan, with the tier 1 folly mid, the way to Rosh is, is open more for newbie, if anything. Yep, here comes. And they're looking at tier 2 here as well. Master reward, it's really hard to defend. Look at how aggressive Hal is playing, because he does have the black BKB, so he can just play up behind the tower like that. We're going to have to fish for a very good arrow and maybe collapse onto Hal, but hard to collapse on a single hero. There's a nice arrow, but yeah, again, Fish is already prepped up. He's got BKB. He's just got too many heroes back him up. The Earthshaker, the biggest one. If they go on that, it's going to be a wipe. But they're not really trading. They're 5 million around mid. The tower will drop to a third HP, and they'll Newbie will just settle for that. They'll wait for the wards to cool down, and, and then they'll go again. Yeah, I, I, this is where I think the core Venno comes in. If you had a hero like Tie Hunter or Bat Rider, it's really hard to initiate. I mean, you could maybe jump in Ravage or grab one. But you really will still lose a tower, whereas Venomancer slowly let you hold. But and what is he holding for? That's that's kind of the concern here for he's me. He's holding for time for Death Prophet as well as Razor to get, bit, get big. And if you look at the Razor, he's got Midas. I venture to guess that this is the only Razor game in this entire tournament where he has got Midas first. <laughs> Can they keep up even with the Midas? You're up against Greevil's Greed. It's a max devour. And they've got a gyro who flash oh, farms. They're running quicker. into each other right go. now. Where's the doom? Doom is not flown off here against Lin, and they'll back off. Moose gonna stun himself. He's actually not going BKB. He goes for the Sanj, perhaps into a halberd for the razor, uh, perhaps into a, a Sanj and Yasha, which we used to be the all the rage and the go-to build. Just because it means it's very hard to juke you when you're trying to get your stun off. It's an interesting choice, definitely. I, I I don't think it's gonna be a Heaven's Halberd because you're not really disarming anybody that does Just a lot of Razor, but yeah. he's he's not scary right now. Yeah, 
He needs a lot of time, Xiao Tuji, before he can really get into the game. In terms of what are they holding for, I, I guess the ultra late game, right? LG says one more 80 minute game to go. I feel like that game, they actually had the late game advantage in terms of fighting. And this game, I'm not so sure. Yeah, another master, but we're coming in. Frazier is going to hit on DD. He does have reincarn, so they don't really care that he's using all of the spells. The silence is going to come through. They might care if they lose him a second time. The sun's going to come through. He's going to get doomed as a result. The, the, the Gale, yeah, I, th I think that's the fight. The Gale, the fight's over. Nice two-man Gale another here. arrow. This could turn it. It's going to go. Oh, oh, oh. Just clip Songshan on the tail. But it's too stubby of a tail, and it won't quite latch. So the t that tower is going to give them the Blink Dagger on Shadow Shaman, so that's pretty decent. At the same time though, that was a 5v4 defense, Shaotuji was slowly farming up top. I think he's going to pick up the Point Booster here and march his way to a uh, Aghanims. And there you go, the recovery <laughs> and a Midas. I mean, this is, newbie is not, new, as soon as newbie sees this, they're going to go aggressive. They know the Wraith King ult is on cooldown for 4 minutes. It's a double Midas, there's no BKBs yet, and they've got mass nukes and mass lockdown. LD. They're not gonna sit back on this. How about a mind game? You just you just Midas and put it back on the courier. <laughs> Every 80 seconds. I think you should actually hide this. If yeah. you show this to newbie, it's only gonna encourage them. Because Rave King doesn't need attack speed. They'll be foaming at the mouth right? when they see it. Yeah, Rave King doesn't need attack speed, right? So you know what? It's like, and he's a support. So you're like, hey man, he actually doesn't have any items. It's cool. But uh, to. To be serious for a bit, I think Newbie's gonna come at you aggressively no matter what. Look at their items, they've got a blink on the Shadow Shaman, it's all mid game. Mech, Sanjo on the Alchemist, Earthshaker probably working towards a blink of his own, up to 900 gold, and BKB on the Gyro. Yeah. They have late game heroes if they want to play it that way, but they see this fight as a razor, and Newbie, I think rightfully, just want to fight right now. I think if LGD could hold the next 5 to 10 minutes, they actually put position themselves very well into the late game. Good luck, here come the wards, I wish them all the best. They've got no Wraith Keen they need this arrow, it will connect, the follow-up stun can be there, except Doom's too quick, he Dooms DD, protecting his buddy, and driving them back. Now Rabbit comes in, he can't be Doom, but the ward stands strong for the time being, there is a split push going for the Death Prophet, maybe they trade tier 2s, they try to stall, but out comes the Fissure, and in comes the Alk, he'll connect on DD, but the mech by Yao, perfectly timed! Call down, once, does it hit again on the Wraith Keen, he barely makes his way out of that, another arrow on the banana, just draw buying time while well, the Death Prophet pushes through the top and well now Lin will have to retreat the TP's come out from the Doom no Doom available the tier 2 bottom lane in the end will fall and goes the way of the Alk they make the best trade possible which is close to a tier 2 for a tier 2 that's not a bad trade Again, it is they, it's yeah, quite good defend at 5v4 they didn't lose a single hero and you have of course your Rave King's reincarnation coming down the Midas's are slowly ticking you know what dare I say I think LGD is beginning to make a hold they are still losing tower, but I think defending tier 2 versus defending tier 3 is a whole different story. And LGD is ramping up to some some like next level items. I, I, f I feel conflicted about this game, because on the one hand, I think Newbie clearly have the scarier late game support. So like, Wraith Kane's not bad, but he's a single target stun. He's never going to get to the point where he builds damage. At best, he's just a slow to set up for the Death Prophet, whereas Earthshaker can stun your entire team. No BKB is really in sight for LGD, and Shadow Shaman with the wards and the instant disable offers a lot. So I feel the supports of Newbie will do more late, but the cores of LGD really match up well yeah. against Newbie. This is a... Do you want to, is it fair to call it almost a two and a half melee carry lineup? Doom's a melee carry, Alk is as well, and Gyro, well, technically I mean, he has yeah, some good range with the flash, strange. but he's got to be in close to hit his first target, which means he's probably getting linked at some point in a fight. By the way, Xiaotuji has not used his Midas for like the past 30 seconds, and I'm just like foaming in my mouth, but yes. So I, 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 am, I am a bit conflicted, although whenever you have late game and you have Doom, it, life is always going to be hard. Well, here comes the big smoke gank right now. The wards just smoke, uh, scouted them out. So, Xiao Tuji, he's really in big trouble. Gotta get out of there. No drums even activated. He's going to get blown up. And when you're making a late game comeback, well, those are not the not the fights you, you want to take. Yeah, great aggressive wards by Nubian. And, and you can see they're littering the map. They've got one near the Roshan pit as well, and that's going to be their next objective. They may even just walk straight into the pit now. Tier 2's down mid, Tier 2's down bottom. They've got the BKB, the Sanji Yasha complete on Mu. The only thing they'll be lacking is the Chemical Rage for this upcoming Roche fight, but beyond that, why wait? You've got an Alpha Lafar as well that can provide some extra damage, and they will get arrowed, but LGD, they just want to chip away. They do not want to engage into this one. Yeah, I think the key thing right now for LGD is just the Lay this as much as you can. They are Watch. trading bottom. They're going for a tier one and they'll get it, but it looks like it'll come at the cost of a Roche. Yeah, 
and there's really nothing they can do about it. it looks like two TP come in. They're gonna get the tower tonight as well. Nice blink coming out from Banana. He does have Shackle Mana. You will use them right now. There's Fissure, there's Enchant Totem. Not exactly the best chaining of spells. They are gonna get a kill, but I'm not sure how much more they're gonna get unless they're gonna get rotation. Oh, the man. big dunk's gonna come in. Enchant Totem. Do they still have any more suns available? He's got a TP. He's gonna go for it in the tree line. The Shackle, oh, the Hex already. Oh, they found him. All right, he's straight up dead. But Space created. Look at the mid lane here. Lin is already breaking down on tier one tower. If they could keep pushing for space like this, they are trading, considering their position, extremely well. Like, that's a Wraith King that, that nearly took out the tower bottom lane. It will be denied, which which I think hurts LGD quite a bit. They need the gold, but Lumi, considering how bad it could be... It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's honestly not that bad. So it's a very interesting turn here. Looks like Doom's going to pick up the Shiva's guard. I like that item choice. You blink in, you Shiva. Essentially, the entire team is disabled for like half a second, and then you just, you know, go to work. But you can see Newbie's gold is just piling in. The Devour, as well as the Greeble's free, even the early hum of the Dominator and Hour are kicking in for sure. The Ancient's being warded is going to slow Moo down a bit, but he's up to 1800 gold, and I imagine with the Shivas on Doom, we'll see an Assault Caress for him next, and from there forth, probably a BKB into an Abyssal, how? I'm curious to see what his item progression will be. I would say his most common choice here is either MKB or maybe a Butterfly. And Well, against Death Prophet, Butterfly is not going to help you so much. So maybe we are looking just at a straight MKB. Can those hits not be avoided? No. The ghost hits? Oh, Arrow fishing for Moo mid lane. Can't find him. Yeah, those ghosts do like... They do hero damage, but they don't, they don't hit physically. But they kind of do. Yeah, it's like a, it's it, like it, Omni Slash strikes, for example, that yeah. do physical but can't be evaded. Right, so. right. Oh, they're into the jungle now. A newbie. There's one tier two remaining, and at this point, newbie have to know this tower is gonna die. As soon as they see anyone top, they'll know for sure. But uh, can they get a trade? That'll be the yeah. Big they part. channel their Amro Bulldog. And just go. Yeah, you can see that Lin is already on the bottom. Nobody pushing out. The one it. concern here is if they blow like the Death Prophet ult, and then newbie say, "Okay, we're high grounding right now." I think they have to be very careful about using a big ult like that here. The Death Prophet ult does follow her if she does decide to TP. Yeah, it's more if she's used up too much the timer. Time yeah, so. yeah, and they don't have a big defense like like call down or something. They just clear up the way. So it's really up to Yao. And here comes a high ground push. Banana drops down the ward, and here we go. The push is coming. There's gonna use the clip. Shout Tucci, big plasma field breaking. Lots nice measure. That caught two! Well, they, they're, well, D's gonna just die. His reincarnation is not even online back yet. They still have to exorcism. I think priority number one is destroying those wards. And they have done it. I'm not really sure what a newbie want to challenge the high ground without those wards. Arrow is gonna find hell, but... Uh, newbie are here. <laughs> they were backing off, but they, they retreated in a nice way. They, they didn't actually TP out. They just walk away together. It is concerning that one mass serpent ward dropped the tier 3 tower down to half health. So, if they... Do it one more time. In theory, oh. newbie should be able to get the tier three and perhaps move on with the Rex. Some some crafty D warding here from DDC. Sadly, he's found a, a sentry that was already expiring. But oh, the sentry miss. He's got a jump now. This is a, a risky pickup for DDC. I feel he is with a Doom having a Blake, quite likely to die at some point. But it will help them clear out this jungle and get some safe places to farm. Well, if the Doom's blinking in just to Doom or support Mirana, maybe that's worth it actually. They're going in. Here's your hex. That gem just picked up. Oh, how quickly he oh, moves. Oh no, away. not Banana worth. says thanks for the free 900 gold. But now they look for more. He Didi. doesn't have reincarn yet. He doesn't have reincarn. I don't think they've written down the timer though, or they would have doomed that. But they don't really need to kill that him. That is now. the shortest, li shortest lived gem. And over at the ancient area, he got us. He got two centuries of bleed. Over at the ancient area, they just missed that D ward. So with that new found gem, they could just easily go there. So. Hmm. How's up to another 4k go? Um, I think MKB, like you said, is a good choice. Mantis is not bad if you're trying to break high ground, but before the next push, Shaochuji is going to have that Aghanim Scepter finish, so that's a really, really big item. If you can stand on the front line and just start plasma feeling the wave away, linking up before people could blink in. I'm thinking he needs more than just that. He needs a, a, a lot BKB. of burst damage yeah. here. The and again, they don't have defensive supports. There's no disruption. There's nothing to really keep him safe when they go in. It's no, really he up to Yao. Team. It's really up to Yao, both act through activating the mech, as well as that putting down the Gale. But you can see that Yao is 
just sitting in the base at this point. He's just warding wherever he thinks the push is coming in. And he's done kind of a, a pretty good job. He, he needs to keep stacking wards though. Here we go. Here they go. Shiva's against Pop. DD, he's got his ult, and he'll lose it fast. They actually do a decent amount of damage here, and they'll look to clean up the wards while Moon throws out a stun. Goes away of DD. He'll be forced back. They are destroying the wards rather quickly, but it cost them a reincarn, and doesn't look like they'll get anything else. Again, LGD, given their predicament, the trades are not bad. Yeah, I think the trades are actually... But Newbie's not giving anything up, really. That's fine, but I think with double Midas this year, I think eventually LGD is going to get enough gold. If you compare the cooldown between Exorcism as well as Mass Serpent Ward, that's 110 seconds versus 115. I think Exorcism is a very nice way in terms of mowing down the wards. Again, they are losing health on their tier 3s, but if you look at this particular tier 3, it lost 100 HP. I think LGD, if they don't make a mistake, they will continue to hold. And uh, does, does this remind you of the old LGD? LGD from TI3? Lose every single lane, win late game. Yeah, that, that was the old LGD. They'd get the Yao Mag, they'd give up like five towers, and they'd just farm Silar, and they'd look for one RP from Yao to turn the game. It, it's not quite the same drafts, but it feels like the same style. Just give up towers, seed map control, and turtle, and just wait for a mistake. It worked against Mouse. Will it work against Doobie? I don't know. But it, it really, it just feels, there's no shall wait, but in some ways I feel the spirit of that team lives on in LGD. Yeah, also, uh, just the two buddies in this game drafting against each other, right? Yao and uh, Xiao Wei used to play mid and off lane respectively for, for their own team and always uh, swap the lanes if, if it need be, but now going up against each other. It's so annoying to break this LGD pace. You've got to worry about arrows coming in, the the Venomancer ultimate doing a lot of damage, and the Ags is not far off. 250 gold. This will help though. They get themselves an Assault Caress. Yeah. This is going to make the wards hit harder. And well, we got to look at the glyph status here of LGD as well. Do they have one? It's still cooling down for about a minute. Looks like a minute and a half perhaps. And well, with that being, oh no, 30 seconds. So they may have it for this push. We'll see. They're we'll gonna see. wait for the next wave. Now, one thing to be said before the next push happening is, if you look at the go graph, the go graph is continuously climbing up in the favor of newbie, and this is because LGD is constantly stuck in the base. Newbie has the entire map to farm, and LGD does not. So, LGD can't do this forever. They drop the wards. But now he gets caught. We'll tank an arrow. Oh, is he gonna go down here? Shiva's coming through. It connects up quite a few, and now, well. They oh, get a stun on three! Done. Oh! What a mess! Then the fissure! Moo goes to work! Engage slap chat mode! They've doomed up the Razor, but he's already got his ultimate off, and the Alk falls! How's low? The Aegis is gone! He's gotten too many though! Now he just needs to run! Can they finish him off with the poison? One more ward, the BKB still keeping him alive for now. DD, held off by Sangsheng, and how? Well, will he take down here? I don't think so. That would have went terribly if they lost a gyrocopter, but they traded Master Bin Ward for a tower, and they traded essentially two for one, so... What a stun by the Alk. Oh! Okay, sorry. I thought Earthshaker for a second was going for the kill on how, but... No, they're on the same team. Yeah, that poison state is fatal, but yeah. didn't quite have enough. Um, that was before the Veno Eggs, by the way. Yes. Now they have the Veno Eggs, so... The take, thing is... Take the damage you were looking at, and double it. Well, not quite double it, but increase it by, what is it, like 50%? Something along those lines? It's but, a lot of it. But there's also BKBs, though, right? So, yeah. Or at least BKB on Gyrocopter. There's some. Yeah. And Gyrocopter, it looks like he's going to go for Satanic, which... He's actually the only one, although Xiao Wei will have one fairly soon. And I imagine eventually we're going to see the Alchemist getting one as well. Oh. Do newbie just wait? I feel like this is that point where you say, okay, they've got a Veno Eggs. Let's just get our BKBs out on the Alk or the Doom, but Mu will actually go for a Vitality Booster, so... Heart. Similar idea, I guess, tank up and just look to Siege. Just out regen it. But uh, I guess it's a little bit more of a versatile pickup. The BKB will not help you at all against Razor or Death Prophet, really, and... Uh, a little bit more useful uh, to have the Heart regen there. Against... I know, obviously, the BKB is amazing. I, I think if you're newbie, you play the exact same way you've been playing, which is waiting for the cooldowns and then keep on sieging. Because, again, if you keep looking at the girl graph, it, it has not dipped down at all. And that's considering the fact that there is two Midas assists, because every time LG defend the base, they lose hit point of the buildings, they lose buildings, they lose heroes. So they are bit being whittled down. And continuously, we do see newbie farming, for example, the enemy ancients, the thinking about going with for Roshan. Maybe you wait for the Roshan here, and then you take the Aegis, and then you go for the Siege.
They are getting close to some items. The finally the the Midas has paid off. BKB is almost out for your Wraith King. Razor's almost got the makings of a BKB if he wants to pick it up next. And Shiva's guard inbound for the Death Prophet. As big as Newbie are getting. There's a quad core working on LGD, and they're catching up, Bloomy, slowly but surely. I'm not sure if I like the BKB choice on the Wraith King. Because what your does goal actually is to do? die, right? Yeah, your role is to die. And to tank damage. But if you're BKB'd, there's less damage that can affect you. So it is an interesting choice in that regard. In the sense that I guess you can. Well. Here's 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 a here's a real deal though. Like a lot of give newbies. Me, give me the real deal, Lumi. Okay. Play the real deal me. is a lot of the magical damage on newbie is all AOE. So they're not really focusing on DD, but DD will still die. Like the call down, the fissures, the echo slam, the venom. Oh. Yeah. So he kind of just need a BKB to run in and just be like, hey guys, focus me. And maybe, maybe that's it. Okay. Well, from here he'll want some more items. The one thing he doesn't have, which he'll need, is a blink tag of this game, and without one, it. The Earthshaker can really disrupt the Wraith King's initiation. We've seen where he's tried to run in, gets Fissure blocked, gets caught away from his team, maybe even wastes his ultimate. Yep. Well, this Roche is just melting with his Valkyrie Acid. Acid Spray plus AC. It doesn't take long. The arrow crashes through the pit, but far too late to stop it. So now they've got to go again. And if you're newbie, you've already taken the Tier 3 top. I imagine you're setting a course for the racks there as well. Yeah, and you can see that right now, Lin is doing a good job pushing that wave out. Now we gotta remember that LGD took a three-man Alchemist stun in that previous fight. And they were still a bit of hole with just dropping a single death profit. So, I'm inclined to say that if LGD plays a fight right, they could hold, take the Aegis, and maybe even win the fight. But here comes a Moonlight Shadow Initiation, they want to take the fight outside the This stage. has not been spotted. There's a lane ward over here, and there's another lane ward they mid, see but banana it's a bit far back. They find how. oh no, he's got Aegis, and he doesn't react oh. in time, but Arrow will be in time. Ah, too late. I mean, there, there's no reason for DD to initiate that hastily. He could have just waited for his ally to get closer. There was no detection. He probably thought there was backup inbound, and it was just a lucky timing, but... Well, actually, just kidding. Uh, Shadow Shaman had a gem on him. And oh. he had, yeah, he had blink. Yeah, they're gonna de-ward this now and, and look to go back in. So, it was LGD's first real move out of the base in some time, and it was a very short-lived one. Coming now will be, well, for Banana, picking up the makings of the Aghanim Scepter. And they'll go for the high ground again. Yep, here we go. BKB not activated. DD, you can see he's not standing at the front line. Two men silence, two men Gale right now. Shao Tuchi doing the lights, activating the BKB. Shao is gonna actually doom Shao Tuchi. Not sure about that, but Shao Tuchi looks like he's gonna go down. As a result, there's way too much damage. Lin going back on the high, high ground here. I don't think he can defend about this. Everybody's just straight up dying. DD, this is BKB's down. Counter is just zoning them out. The Death Prophet can't fight. The arrow's gonna miss. LGD, back to the well, says Newbie. We're taking this, Rax. There's nothing you can do about it. And boy, are they right. It's just too much. That was after Razor BKB and popped his ult, but he's just not tanky enough. Yeah, I think with the gy with getting Doom and the Gyrocopter's flag coming through, just absolutely destroyed him. And he hasn't even really built pure damage, but there's an AC and there's Acid Spray. At LGD, they were turtling for late game, but they'll never get there. They tap out. Newbie take this one, not in 80 minutes, but they make it look easy in 36. You do have to go back to the laning stage and just wonder what might have happened if they didn't give up a for blood and three kills before the creep spawned. Yeah, at the end it was just a numbers game. Like, it doesn't matter if you quote-unquote waste the Doom on a BKB unit, like, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, newbie just had way too much, and fairly simple victory. So, at this point, if Newbie beats Mouse, they are moving in. And if newbie also beats Mouse, LGD moves in as well, right? Is that correct? Since if LGD, newbie, if newbie wins this next game, then Mouse is 0-2, and, and we end the tiebreaker. Yes. If Mouse win the next.